photographers. How's your color science? This third video about the basic terminology of photography is about color. Now, color is really two topics. One is technical accuracy and the other is creative intent. Now, cameras generally have two ways to manage color. The first is called white balance. It's really about setting the color temperature of the light in the scene. And then the second is selecting a color profile, settings that manage the information coming from the sensor to create a visually pleasing image. Starting with the appropriate color temperature is a good way to begin. Actually, it's a slightly confusing term, particularly as the light we call warmer, the ambers and oranges of indoor incandescent lighting, is actually a lower color temperature than the cool blues of sunlight. Uh, observing the quality of the light to assess its color temperature is a skill that my friend James, who works as a lighting director, has. Now, I have a basic sense, but it's certainly not reliable. So. My camera's auto white balance is generally more accurate than I am. And to be honest, in the majority of situations, it does a very good job. However, you may not want accuracy. If an amber interior scene is too white, it may not represent the mood you'd like to capture. So most recent models have alternate auto white balance settings to keep the warmth of low light interiors. If that's enough for you, and you'd like to jump ahead to color profiles, use the skimmer or the links in the description to jump ahead. Now, otherwise, let me give you a little more geeky detail on the rest of the white balance settings. Well, the drawback of using the auto setting is that it may change from one image to the next. That's usually not desirable, and it's even more of a problem for video. Selecting one of your camera's white balance presets overcomes that. And most cameras have several presets, sunlight, overcast or cloudy conditions, interiors, fluorescent. Some cameras have a preset for underwater scenes. The way to select the best one is usually by eye. Go through the presets until you find the one that best represents the scene. That's a creative decision. And the drawback of using a preset is that you may forget that setting and inadvertently take a bunch of sunny pictures with the interior setting giving your images a blue cast. It happens. Then, for greater color accuracy, there are two white balance settings with more detailed and specific control. Uh, first is adjusting the color temperature by selecting its Kelvin setting. Well, Kelvins are named after William Thompson, later Lord Kelvin, and color temperature is not the same as the wavelength or frequency of specific colors in the visible light spectrum. Lord Kelvin decided that measurement of heat required an absolute zero. Both Celsius and Fahrenheit require negative numbers from their arbitrary zero points. Uh, physics relates the heat of an object to the light it emits, so Kelvins are a useful way to describe the color temperature. And the range of light that humans experience is between about 2,000 and 10,000 Kelvin. The temperature of the tungsten filament in an incandescent light bulb is 2,700 Kelvin. The surface temperature of the sun is 5,778 Kelvin. Now, I'm taking Wikipedia's word for those. I don't have any way to verify. Now, that is also the color temperature when you're using those light sources. Unintuitively, cloudy conditions have higher color temperatures than bright sunlight. You can consult Google to find charts that provide the color temperature of various lighting situations. Uh, many studio lights have defined or adjustable color temperatures. But if you want accuracy, particularly in mixed light situations, you'll need a colorimeter. They're not cheap. I don't own one. The color temperature in Kelvins is a number that you can set in the camera's white balance menu, although the granularity may not be as fine as you'd like. The possibly more accurate alternative is letting the camera measure the light and setting a custom white balance. So the procedure varies from camera to camera, but generally you show it an object that you know is a neutral white and it measures and sets the appropriate temperature. Uh, 
Uh, those experienced in the art will use a gray card. This is the back of my DSC Labs Chroma Selfie. Now, it's designed to reflect a 55% neutral gray and will provide an accurate color white balance. Now, some manufacturers, like Sony here, show you the actual captured setting. Note that this setting shows the Kelvin setting and two more numbers, AB and GM. In this case, the GM adjustment is M2. Now, that's the white balance offset or adjustment, as white balance alone may still include a color cast introduced by other sources, the light, reflections from a colored wall, or your ND filter. White balance adjustment has two axes, amber to blue and green to magenta. Uh, those adjustments can improve accuracy, as demonstrated here, or add a color cast or tone for creative intent. White balance offset is one way to tune the color reproduction to your creative purposes. And you'll find more options and capabilities using your camera's color profiles, which provide a number of tools. Many call this color science and feel that a specific camera or manufacturer reproduces colors in a more pleasing way than others. I don't agree. There are very few companies that make sensors, <laughs> and most cameras, including those in phones, use sensors made by Sony. Most sensors use the same color capture technology, the Bayer Array. Now, as a result, the RAW files produced in the majority of cameras are virtually identical. And so, in my mind, there's no inherent hardware advantage or difference one brand has over another. The difference is in the color profiles. The settings that are applied as the sensor's RAW output is processed to create a JPEG image. And every manufacturer provides a default, a number of presets, and then further adjustments used to fine tune your preferences. Color profiles have marketing names, Sony's creative styles, Nikon's picture controls, Fujifilm's film simulations. But if you tell me that you prefer Canon's color science, what I hear is, I can't be bothered to select a color profile that suits my needs, nor to customize it to my taste. <sighs> Don't be so lazy or indifferent. You're better than that. Most cameras use descriptors like vivid or neutral and scene types like portrait or landscape. They're sometimes very explicit, like autumn leaves or sunset. However, those are the presets. And typically, you can adjust further parameters to change the saturation and tint, as well as other settings like contrast and sharpness. So I can't back this up with any evaluation that I've done, but I'm pretty confident that you have a preference for one camera's default settings. It can be replicated by making those adjustments on another camera. And testing and experimenting with the various settings to understand their effect on an image can easily occupy an otherwise idle afternoon. When you're done, you'll have one or more color science settings that suit your creative need. And don't let the names distract you. You may prefer the autumn leaf setting for a sunset over the lake. That's your creative expression. Make the image your own. Create your mood. Tell your story. Capture your vision. So, not getting the color balance right in camera isn't the end of the world, particularly if you've been saving RAW files along with the JPEG images. White balance and color profiles are applied in the camera after the RAW file is recorded and then applied only to the JPEG image. And your image editing software has the ability to set the color temperature, often more precisely than the in-camera adjustments, and of course, to make color adjustments to all of the parts of your image. I won't go into detail, but there's a nearly infinite world of possibility if you're starting with a RAW file. Uh, JPEG images can also be adjusted, but with less potential before quality suffers. And before you start, consider two devices. First, a light to illuminate your workspace. You don't need to have your vision misled by your room lighting. So this is the BenQ Screen Bar Plus. They sent it to me to try, and I've had it for a few weeks. Now I get to keep it, and I'm going to continue using it. And I will be honest with you. 
they didn't get to review the script or this video before posting. BenQ is based in, and the screen bar is made in Taiwan. It balances on the top of the screen. A slight challenge on this thin iMac. The counterweight is adjustable to keep it stable and steady. Probably not the right choice for a laptop screen. The single flat cable plugs into the screen bar's USB port and splits in two. One is USB for power, the other end has a small round angled controller that sits on my desk. So at 45 centimeters, the screen bar is a little smaller than my monitor, and it's a fairly light 680 grams. The light is angled, so it doesn't reflect on the screen, and the light feels soft or subtle, whatever the right term is to describe the diffuse and indirect nature of this LED source. According to the manual, it meets several international and European standards and certifications. At brightest, it's 1000 lux, relatively high for interior light fixtures. A 60 watt bulb is about 800, a 100 watt bulb about 1600. But specs aside, it's much nicer lighting for my desk environment than the halogen overheads. Tap the dial on the controller to turn it on. The dial adjusts the light level in 14 steps. Press the button and the dial adjusts the color temperature from warm amber to cool blue in eight steps. The manual says the range is 2700 to 6500 Kelvin. I use a piece of white paper to judge, but at any point, one step up looks blue and one down looks amber, so I found it hard to determine. And what I also noticed is how quickly my eyes adjust from one color temperature to the next. Uh, there's a second button, activating the sensor and the auto dimmer. Auto sets the light according to the ambient level. And auto sets the color temperature at 4000 Kelvin, which BenQ suggests is optimal. There's no way to determine which setting that is if you're adjusting it manually. But now that the environment is properly lit to assess color, Use a monitor calibration tool to make sure the colors on screen are displayed properly. I purchased and used the Data Color Spider. There are other alternatives. Uh, these devices test and analyze your display, creating a setting that provides a neutral and accurate representation. So last thing, a color chart, the colorful side of my Chroma Selfie. And by including this chart in a photo, you'll have a reference for your images. But make sure you take one under each lighting condition. Then you can use those settings for all the images taken under those conditions. Now, let me summarize. The auto settings can manage color for you, but don't be intimidated. You can manage these settings successfully. And photography is about you. The stories only you can tell. The images that speak of your moods, experiences, and perceptions. If you're afraid of making a mistake, don't be. Just make sure to include raw when you save your images. <laughs> and as always, don't wait for an important event like your safari in Namibia or your friend's island destination wedding to learn how your camera works. Taking photographs is free and will help you learn and master your camera as well as develop your creative voice. Create until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. And as always, please post your relevant questions and civil comments. I do read and reply. And if you enjoy my videos, it'd be great if you'd become a subscriber. Click on the button below and join that self-identified but exclusive group. This channel is not sponsored. I won't stop in the middle to read you an ad. I don't allow YouTube to interrupt my videos with mid-roll ads. That has a financial impact, so I am very grateful to those of you who have decided to support this channel by becoming a member. The join button below lets you join that select group. Please choose the option that feels right for you. And thanks for watching. Stay safe.